Good afternoon. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a device called a buffer chip. Uh, in this particular case, it is a model ULN2803. Uh, I'll call up the data sheet here uh, for you real quick. Uh, these are Darlington transistor array chips, and what they allow us to do is to uh, more safely uh, power or control the switching of power on higher current and higher voltage devices than what the Pico can handle. The Pico's output is only 3.3 volts, which isn't very much, and it is only about 10 milliamps, barely enough to light an LED effectively. So, uh, the next question anybody that's tinkering with microcontrollers would be, well, how do I control something that requires more power? Well, this is one of the chips you would use. You would have to use something in between the Pico and the device you're powering. In this case, uh, a commonly referred to as a buffer chip. Uh, I don't want to go into a lot of the detail of this chip, uh, but I will give you an overview of what's going on inside. You'll have an input uh, that'll go through a 2.7k ohm resistor into a pair of transistors. And this is called a Darlington pair, where one is on top of the other, uh, kind of one is controlling the other. And then you'd have your output. Now, in this case, the thing to understand is the output, we're not outputting power to something. We're giving the something, the motor, the relay, the solenoid, the device, a place to allow the current to flow to ground. So keep that in mind, and we'll be hitting on that numerous times in this explanation. And then there's also in this package a few more resistors and then some diodes to prevent current from rushing back towards the logic device, the Pico, because if the current can flow backwards toward that, it could damage it, and that's the point of this chip, to prevent that damage. Uh, but this is a Darlington pair, and that's what's inside uh, this chip. So here would be uh, a very basic uh, logic diagram. Uh, this is your input, here's your output, everything's going to go back to common, and then off to uh, ground in our case, or zero volts, depending on how you want to word that. Now, uh, understanding its, its power kind of needs a demonstration first. Now, you, most likely you've powered uh, basic LEDs that are, uh, are pushing about 10 milliamps, maybe 15 milliamps, and ooh, they're bright and all that. Well, take a look at what we're going to do here. I'm going to switch over to our program. And we will run it. Now, hopefully you noticed how bright that was. That is actually a watt and a half of power going into that LED. It's a surface mount LED rated at one watt. I'm powering it at six volts, and it's drawing about 250 milliamps, so a watt and a half. There's a lot of power going through that. Uh, but the, the key element here to understand right away is this is this device, the ULN2803, uh, is rated at 500 milliamps per single output. Now, that doesn't mean each one of these eight outputs can handle 500 milliamps simultaneously. You'll have to derate that overall for the whole package. Uh, but nonetheless, it can handle 500 milliamps on one output. And that's how I can uh, power that more powerful LED for our example circuit. Uh, so we've got a much higher current rating, uh, higher voltage capability. It can deal with 50 volts, up to 50 volts. Uh, it's got the output clamp diodes to help redirect electricity and current to go the way we want it to and not back into the Pico. Um, and then it's commonly referred to or used in relay driver applications. And I do want to point something out on this. Often in the maker world, we consider this device being um, a relay. And in truth, it is. This blue thing is the relay. Everything else here is supporting circuitry to prevent 
damage to the Pico on the logic side. Uh, so what I'm talking about and what they're talking about is the relay, just the blue piece there. Or another example is this read relay or another uh, relay, just like the one that was on that package earlier. Uh, but this is just the device itself. Um, those don't really require a lot of current, but with that, uh, what's called the, the flyback issue or that inrush of current coming out of the uh, electromagnetic field as that collapses around the coil that actuates the relay or a solenoid and so forth. When that collapses, it creates an inrush of current through the logic side into the Pico. It's momentarily, but it can be very uh, strong and very damaging to any logic circuit, not just the Pico. So that's a big part of what this thing does. Um, uh, let's see, I think there was something else. Yes, I wanted to go over the applications that they uh, are common for this. Uh, just as we mentioned, relay drivers, hammer drivers, and not carpentry hammers, uh, lamp drivers, display drivers for LED type displays, etc. Um, these things are used in a tremendous amount of different uh, consumer electronic goods. Uh, you will see these chips all over the place. Um, I, when I was doing a lot more tinkering with electronics, uh, this is my collection or was left of my collection of ULN 2803 chips. Um, I always had plenty on hand and always will have plenty on hand so that I'm not frying my precious little Picos and so forth. Uh, so now let's take a look at how this all works, and we're going to go to the fritzing diagram uh, to help me explain this to you. Uh, the first thing to understand in this circuit, we've got an external power supply. On the workbench here, I used my uh, bench power supply, uh, and that's actually what's providing the power to light that LED with a watt and a half of power. Over here on the Pico side, it's got its own power supply coming through the USB cable. Uh, they do share a common ground, you'll see that here, and then that way we're ensuring that our logic levels uh, are on the same potential. So that zero volts on the power side and zero volts on the logic side are truly the same. If they're not, then we can't get effective triggering on our output from the Pico. Now looking at the wiring, uh, here at GP15, I got a wire going to the number one input of the ULN2803. And then here's a ground wire coming over to the same ground connection uh, on the ULN2803. And then that ground connection comes back up onto the ground plane. And that's going to go back to the power supply. So the main power, all the power that's going through the circuit is actually going this way and not coming back through and going into the Pico. So this is our logic side of the circuit. The Pico and these two wires and these first eight pins of the ULN2803 chip. Everything else is on the power side. Now let's see how the power is routed through this. Here's our power supply. We're coming in here with our, in this example I've got on the bench, six volts would be coming in here, and it goes to the LED on the positive input side. I'm not using a resistor here. I'm sort of abusing this device uh, just for this example. But you'll notice that the power is there, and it's already at the LED. And it comes through the LED down this wire, but it's actually stopping right here at that input pin. And this is on the ground side or the zero volt side. When this input on GP15 goes high, that connects uh, the circuit, if you will, through that Darlington pair of transistors. And that allows current to flow through this device over to this pin out back up to the ground rail, and then back to our power supply. The important thing to wrap your head around on this is that we are not providing power to the LED. We are providing a place for the power that is at the LED to flow to zero volts or ground.
Now, what throws a lot of people is they'll see this wire here connected to the power supply. So they're thinking, oh, this is how power's getting into the LED. No, this is for recycling power, recycling the energy. As mentioned, uh, on magnetically or magnetic uh, circuits, such as a coil, uh, electromagnetic, electromagnet, uh, which is actually the actuator in a solenoid or a relay, when that is turned off, there's this energy that's sitting there, current. And when that field collapses, that current wants to go somewhere. So it can either go through here, backwards through the circuit, and kill your Raspberry Pi Pico, or it can be sent back through here using those diodes and then put back on this positive wire back into the power supply. So that extra energy just goes right back and recirculates into the positive side of your power supply. So that's the whole thing in a nutshell. The hardest thing uh, most people have with understanding is we are providing a path for current to go to ground with the 2803. We are not powering something. So we're always switching, as is commonly called, the low side. The low side of the circuit, meaning zero volts. We're not switching the high side, meaning a positive voltage. So we'll go ahead and look at the code here, uh, just so that we complete our, our presentation on this. And uh, you'll see it's brilliantly stupid simple. Uh, we've got uh, import a couple of libraries. Um, I'm creating this, treating it kind of like a relay because I'm powering a higher voltage device. So I'm calling it relay one is an output pin on GP15. Uh, I turn on that relay by setting its value to one. We're going to sleep for five seconds, leaving it on and then turn it off. And that's all this program is doing. So we'll run it again, comes on, pulls a bunch of amperage, shuts off, and that's it. Hopefully, um, you can get an appreciation for the importance of ULN 2803 uh, chips or any type of buffer chip between the logic side of a circuit and the power or driven side of a circuit. The microcontrollers were never designed to or meant to be a device to provide power to other devices, other than in very tiny amounts. So we as uh, makers, we need to think in terms of the Pico, the Arduino, all these devices are just there to provide a logic on or off, not a power on or off. Just that in this, the world of modern electronics and LED or some of these other devices take so little current, they literally run off a logic level power. Uh, hopefully, uh, you get an appreciation now for the importance of the ULN 2803 and other similar chips uh, that are buffer chips to help you deal with more higher powered circuits, which we'll be exploring in future videos here on this channel. That's going to wrap it up for this one. I'm Chris Dayhut for Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Hope to see you in the next video.